Alright, Shalom. Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praise and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakai Kodash. Double honor to the elders, GMS, Ruel, peace and salutations to the Lake Akim and the Four Corners, Christian Truth and Sincerity. Peace be unto you. Shalom. Shalom. Uh, this lesson is about the Gentiles in the New Testament and who they are. You get a lot of misconceptions about who the Gentiles are. You go to many different places, but today, in this particular video, we're going to focus on Romans, the 11th chapter, which kills this whole, uh, everybody can make it, the Gentiles are the, uh, the actual natural Gentiles, and it's it uh, kills, you know, that whole discussion. Okay, so okay. we're going to basically start with uh, Romans chapter 11. This is Romans 11 and 1. I say then, have the Most High cast away his people? The Most High forbid, for I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Benjamin. So he says, has God cast away his people? He says, no, God forbid. So that means basically no. So he's letting you know that he's the seed of Abraham. Of, of, uh, of uh, Benjamin So If that didn't mean anything Why would he say that You know There's a, a separation And a distinction Kind of kind And um, You know Not only did uh, Paul You know Straight up You know Say that he's an Israelite You know Of the tribe of Benjamin You know He acknowledged that He was a Roman you know, for for those of you that are out there that are Christians, and you may say, well, there's a book of Romans, you know, there's a book of Corinthians, or there's a book of, you know, uh, Col Colossians, you know, there's a book of Galatians, there's a book of Ephesians or Thessalonians, you know, and you think, you know, just because those were lands, you know, that were, you know, under the, the Roman Empire, you know, you just automatically assume that that was speaking about, you know, people of another nation. You know, you, you automatically assume that the Gentiles were people of another nation outside of Israel. You know, now, although they were looked at as being, you know, uh, uh, foreigners or strangers or Gentiles, these were actually Israelites that were scattered into those regions. You know, um, Bringing it back around to Apostle Paul, you know, he acknowledged that he was a Roman, but not a Roman by, you know, nationality, not a Roman by, you know, um, that being his, his race of people. He was a Roman because that was the pro he was born in a Roman province. You know, he was born in, um, I believe that was a. a uh, Cilicia If I'm not mistaken You know in uh, Tarsus And um, Let me grab this real fast This is the book of um, Acts 21 and, and 39 It says but Paul said uh, Salakia But Paul said I am a man which am a Jew of Tarsus, a city in Cilicia, a citizen of no mean city, and I beseech thee, suffer me to speak uh, to the people. You know, so Paul was born in the Roman province, and that's the reason why he also says, you know, is it lawful to, you know, basically chastise, you know, a man that is a Roman and uncondemned, you know, because he was. Uh, born a Jew or an Israelite with Roman citizenship because he was born in a, in a Roman province. Oh, uh, you keep reading. Kind uh, uh, one more precept. This is the book of uh, Acts 22 and verse 24. It says the chief captain uh, commanded him to be brought into the cap uh, castle and bade that he should be examined by scourging. That he might know uh, wherefore they cried so against him. And so they bound him with thongs. And Paul said unto the centurion that stood by, 
Is it lawful for you to scourge a man that is a Roman and uncondemned? When the centurion heard, uh, he went and told the chief captain, saying, Take heed what thou doest, for this man is, is a Roman. And the chief captain came and said unto him, Tell me, art thou a Roman? And he said, Yeah. The chief captain answered, With a great sum obtained I this freedom. And Paul said, But I was free born. And yeah, because he was born in, in, in Cilicia, you know, in Tarsus, you know, in um, Asia Minor. So he was born free, but the other guy had to basically pay for his freedom. But this shows you that in different uh, places within the New Testament, when you read about Gentiles or you read about those in, in foreign lands outside of Israel receiving salvation, that it was actually dealing with you know, Israelites that were scattered into these regions. Uh, this is back in um, Romans 11 and 2. It says, The Most High have, have not cast away his people, which he foreknew. What ye not what the scripture saith of Elias, which is Elijah, how he make of intercession to the Most High against Israel, saying, Lord, they have killed thy prophets and dig down thine altars, and I am le left alone, and they seek my life. But what saith the answer of the Most High unto him? I have reserved to myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. Even so then at this present time, there is a remnant according to the election of grace. Kind. Uh, I just want to uh, mention something real fast, because... There's something called replacement theology, you know, and this is, is a, a, a theology or a belief that Christians hold that the Heavenly Father replaced the Israelites with the heathen, mm -hmm. you know, which is a, a, a false, you know, breakdown. And here within Romans, the 11th chapter, which you can make this with Romans, the 9th chapter and many other uh, scriptures, you know, uh, Paul is making it clear that the heavenly father did not cast away Israel. It's just that at this uh, appointed time, only the, he, not only did he not cast away Israel, you know, and he's still dealing with them as his chosen people. He just has it to where he's going to only save an election. You know, so when you go into that word for um, a remnant, this is uh, the word in Greek. The word there is uh, lime, and it says a remnant. And when you go into the root of it, it says to leave, to leave behind, to forsake, to be left behind. All right, which um, there's a scripture in the, I believe this is eight mile. You have to get over. Okay, okay. Um, there's a, a scripture in the book of Second Ezra. The 13th chapter where it says that Yahweh Shai is going to deliver those that are left behind. So th those that are left behind is dealing with the, the remnant or the election of the nation of Israel. So uh, going back and to continue our uh, reading, it says, and if by grace, it is no more of works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. And this is verse six. But if it be of works, then it is no more grace. Otherwise, works is no more works. What then? Israel have not obtained uh, that which he seeketh for, but the election have obtained it, and the rest were blinded. Keep reading. Uh, oh, oh, oh. Uh, really okay, kind. Uh, real fast, a, a precept to that is the book of Romans, the ninth chapter. And, um, Verse six, it says, "Not as though uh, the word of the of the Most High have taken uh, none effect, for they are not all Israel, which are of Israel. Because you have two Israel, you have Israel, which is the the nation in the whole, which consists of all twelve tribes. But then you have the Israel of God, which is the elect, all right, which are chosen uh, men and women out of the various different tribes. You know, out of you know all." 12 tribes which are going to be delivered and saved 
So not all Israel is going to be delivered and saved. Only the elect of the nation of Israel will be delivered and saved. So going back to Romans, the 11th chapter, and reading verse 8, it says, According as it was written, the Most High have, uh, have given them the spirit of slumber, eyes that they should not see and ears that they should not hear unto this day. And that's the reason why you have something called the one-third of the nation of Israel and the two-thirds of the nation of Israel, in which the two-thirds of the nation of Israel have been blinded, you know, and made death to the point where they can't, you know, uh, see and hear and get the truth. Verse 9, And David said, Let their table be made a snare and a, and a trap and a stumbling block and a recompense unto them, because that which is good and that which is for their welfare you know, they basically, you know, are stumbling at it. You know, beginning with Yahweh Shai. A lot of Israelites can't receive Yahweh Shai. A lot of Israelites don't believe in his name. And then they scoff against the truth and the breakdowns. So that which is for their welfare, you know, has become a stumbling block unto them. Reading on verse 10, let their eyes be darkened that they may not see and bow down their neck always. I say then, have they stumbled? That they should fall, the most I forbid. But rather through their fall, salvation is come to the Gentiles for to provoke them to jealousy. So now the salvation is coming to the Gentiles. We uh you read the history. Okay, bro, okay. When you read the history, you uh see that uh in uh in the kings uh that uh the northern kingdom had got uh basically basically got cut off and Hosea chapter 1 for they are uh, call them not my people uh, but go ahead God, uh, the word for Gentiles is G1484 which is ethnos you know and um, if I'm not mistaken that's where you get the word ethnicity from but ethnos it doesn't it doesn't mean how can I say it? It just basically is it deals with the nation. You know, so they can say, you know, uh uh non like they say right here in the in the strongs, it says ethnos, probably G1486, a race, uh as of the same habit, an example, a tribe, especially a foreign, and then they put in parentheses non-Jewish, one usually by implication pagan. Gentile heathen nation people. Now, the reason why they say non-Jewish is is because it all goes back to the circumcision, you know, and the non-circumcision, which circumcision was given unto the Israelites. They had their certain uh, rites, they had their certain rit rituals and customs that they followed. And then when it came down to the other nations, they followed uh, those pagan, you know, uh, rituals. You know, they worship the pagan deities, you know, and, and, and idols. So when it came down to Israel, Israel was separate from that until they fell away. You know, so they began to worship and do the same thing that the heathens were doing. And that's where that scripture in Hosea comes into play. Call them not my people, which are my people. And I will not be their God. Because since they started to keep the customs of the of the heathens and not circumcise themselves then basically the heavenly father stopped dealing with them like his people as well as the nation of israel stopped dealing with their own people and they began to treat them like heathens you know so that's why our people became gentiles now going to the 12th verse it says now if the fall of them be the riches of the world and the diminishing of them the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness. For I speak to you Gentiles, and as much as I am the apostles of the Gentiles, I magnify my office. If by any means I may provoke to emulation them which are my flesh, and might save some of them. For if the casting away of them be the re reconciling of the world, uh, what shall the receiving of them be but life from the dead uh, can I mention something real fast because when you go into the word uh, reconciling right 
What does the word reconcile mean? All right, it says to restore friendly relations between, cause to coexist in harmony, make or show to be compatible, make one accept, uh, make one account consistent with another, all right, especially by allowing for transactions. You know, that's not the best definition. Um, the best way to break it down, re means back and conciliar means to bring together. So that's the reason why the first definition is the best to restore friendly relations between which we, when you read the scriptures, none of these other nations ever had a friendly relation with the heavenly father. All right. The only ones that he that he dealt with was the children of Israel. That's the reason why when you go into the Greek and it's G2643, which is Katalage, it says in the New Testament of the restoration of the favor of the most high to sinners. That repent and put their trust in the expiatory death of Yahweh Shai. So that will have to be dealing with who? That will have to be dealing with the Israelites that were sinners. All right, because they were the only ones that were uh, really uh, uh, whose sins and iniquities was imputed unto them. The root of Katalage is Katalaso, and it says to reconcile those who are at variance, to return to favor, to be reconciled to one to reconcile into favor so who had to be reconciled back into the favor of the heavenly father that was uh <laughs> that was uh the israelites man all right and that's through yahweh shai um going back in, in reading uh this is verse 16 it says for if the first fruits be holy the lump is also holy and if the root be holy, so are the branches. Go ahead. Uh, it says, and if some of the branches be broken off. So some of the branches be broken off. So in order to be broken off, you have to be part of that branch, right? To be broken off, you can't be broken off of something that you never were a part of. So the branches were broken off. Uh, Jeremiah 11 and 16. Uh, Lord, how will call thy name a great olive tree? Got gotcha. you. This is Jeremiah 11 and 16. Yahweh will call thy name a green olive tree, fair and goodly fruit. With the noise of a great tumult, he have kindled fire upon it, and the branches are broken. The branches of it are broken. Branches are broken off. A fire is kindled. So that fire didn't consume that. It just, it's a fire that made the branches break off. And who are these branches? We're going to read and find out about it. Go ahead. Uh, in Jeremiah? Uh, back to okay. uh, Romans. This is uh, back in Romans. And if some of the branches be broken off, and thou being a wild olive tree, what grafted in... Olive tree. Thou being a wild olive tree. So now, it says, thou being a wild olive tree, you're grafted in. Get Zechariah, Zechariah uh, 4 and 11 for me, please. Bible be silent. Kind. This is a book of uh, Zechariah, so the fourth so chapter, so verse eleven. Being a wild olive, so that, that that olive, so that olive tree, so these branches, it's still an olive tree. Go ahead. Uh, this is Zechariah four and eleven. Then answered I and said unto him, What are these two olive trees? Two. So there's two separate olive trees. So. It's two separate olive trees. Remember, he says, all right, two olive trees. Go ahead. Upon the right side of the candlestick and upon the left side thereof. So these, uh, uh, part. So these, uh, <laughs> inside joke. It's a like it. inside, inside joke. <laughs> so, he said, uh, these two olive trees, uh, basically by the candlestick. So these two olive trees is twofold. Joshua and this is Rubabel. That's the same over in uh, Revelation chapter 11. Uh, but it also represents Northern Kingdom and Southern Kingdom. So these are these uh, two separate olive trees. So the uh, the Northern Kingdom, they're, remember they're both olive trees, but it's an olive tree that's being grafted, a wild olive tree being grafted contrary to another, but it's, they're both the same olive tree. It's an olive tree 
being grabbed into another olive tree. It's not like an apple tree branch being grabbed into a, a orange tree branch. So it's an olive tree being grafted into another olive tree. Just about to grab something. Uh, this is back in uh, Romans, the 11th chapter, and uh, finishing off in verse 17. It says, And thou, being a wild olive tree, were grafted in among them, and with them partakers of the root and fatness of the olive tree. Boast not against the branches, but if thou boast, thou bearest not the root, but the root thee. So why was uh, the other one the root? Because Judah basically was the one that basically kept, uh, damn, basically there, there is the one that the Most High still was uh, dealing with. So there being that uh, that stick is coming together being joined. It's the Northern Kingdom being joined back. So that stick is coming back together. Those olive trees, that, that, that olive tree, those branches that was broken off is being sticked right back into the other olive tree, the, uh, the southern kingdom. Back in um, Romans 11 and uh, 19, thou will say then the branches were broken off and if I might be grafted in, well, because of unbelief they were broken off and thou standest by faith, be not high-minded but fear. For if the Most High spare not the natural branches, take heed, lest he also spare not thee. Behold, therefore, the goodness and the severity of the Most High on them which fell uh, severity, but towards thee, goodness, if thou... Uh, uh, ba basically, Paul they don't, is, is going over their head, but he's basically talking about y'all, basically y'all. Y'all fell off. You know, because he's talking to the Gentiles, which are the northern kingdom, and he's saying uh, they fell off. He's talking about them. Go ahead. It says, but but toward thee, goodness, if thou continue in his goodness, otherwise thou also shall be cut off. Right. So he said, y'all, you also should be cut off because because guess what? You had uh, just like you had uh, Israelites who basically became Gentiles. Uh, we just read earlier in Romans, what, I think 11 and 7 or 6, where they are not all Israel were uh, Israel. Mm -hmm. So you know, if he stopped believing, he's he's a Gentile. Go ahead. For if thou were cut off of the olive tree, which is by nature, and were grafted contrary to nature into a good olive tree. Cut off from one olive tree. Those That's, that's two olive trees. So you get cut off one olive tree. And grafted into another olive tree so it's that olive tree those two olive trees coming together there's no there's no three olive trees there's only two olive trees go ahead how much more shall these which be the natural branches so the natural branches are judah because the most high at the time basically was still dealing with judah go ahead be grafted into their own olive tree for i would not brethren that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, you know, because it's it's a mystery, you know. Uh, you know, it's a, it was the that's the reason why the scriptures mention, you know, the mystery of the Gentiles. Salakia, uh, the book of um. And it's it's a mystery for anybody who don't want to read. Scripture says, read or seek and ye shall find. It's, it's, it's right there in front of you. It makes no sense. In fact, you think it's actually really talking about other, who's who's these other olive tree, trees being grafted in? Go ahead. Colossians 1 and 27, to whom the Most High will make known what is the riches of his glory, uh, of the glory of his, his Salakia. To whom the Most High will make known what is the riches of the glory of of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is um, Yahweh Shai and you are the hope of glory. You know, because there was a, 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 a basically a forgetting, you know, these Israelites, they went off, they, you know, were scattered amongst the nations, you know, they were, were keeping the customs and the right of, the, of, of those nations, but the Heavenly Father wasn't going to cast them away forever. 
you know, eventually, you know, he was going to bring them back. And that was going to begin with, you know, Yahweh Shai coming and, you know, dying and raising up. All right. Um, the uh, apostles being sent forth. You know, and then eventually, you know, the the uh, Paul, you know, going out and, and visiting, you know, the, the Israelite foreigners that were scattered into these various different regions. You know, they were looking like other nations. You know, they were speaking the uh, the language of the other nations. A lot of them, you know, had tattoos, had bald hair. Some were centurions in the Roman army. You know, they were worshiping Greek gods, but they were brought out of that, you know, back you know, to the truth, back to the light through Yahweh. And that's the reason why it says that the Gentiles have seen a great light, you know, because the Heavenly Father wasn't going to cast him off forever, just like he didn't cast us off forever. You know, and uh, we were born in a, in, a, in a foreign land, you know, amongst our enemies speaking their language. We didn't grow up speaking Hebrew, you know, and, and you know, some of us wasn't even circumcised, you know, on the eighth day. So therefore, we were like in the Gentile state of mind too, until we were allowed to come back. So, uh, reading going, it says, "In um, so all Israel shall be saved." So why does it speak about you know the Gentiles throughout all of those verses, and then say, "And so all Israel shall be <laughs> saved," <Right>. as it <laughs> is written, "There shall come out of Zion a deliverer." And shall turn ungodliness, you know, from Jacob because you had, you know, Israelites that were living ungodly. You know, you know, you had Israelites that knew that they were Israelites, and these are the ones that were brought up knowing that they were Israelites, you know, and then you had Israelites that didn't know that they were Israelites, but they had to be brought back. You know, this was one of the, the, the main things that Yahweh Shai had a problem with with the Sadducees, the wicked Sadducees and Pharisees. This is uh, uh, what you read about in Ezekiel, the 34th chapter. They wasn't visiting the sick, you know, to heal them. They wasn't visiting those Israelites, you know, that were scattered abroad to uh, uh, re reunite them unto, you know, Yahweh. You know, so when Yahweh Shai came, he began to do that. And when, you know, Yahweh Shai, you know, departed, he gave a commission unto you know, the disciples, and they continued to preach his word, you know, unto those that uh, um, knew that, uh, I'm sorry, that were, knew that they were Israelites, uh, with the exception of uh, Apostle Peter, because he was the first one to go unto an Israelite foreigner, which was Cornelius. And then, you know, uh, um, the Heavenly Father would, would through Yahweh Shai, would raise up Paul and Paul will go unto the Israelite foreigners because it's the will of Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai to gather the elect of the nation of Israel. You know, the the um even amongst the ones that didn't know that they were Israelites but will come back through uh believing upon Yahweh Shai. Uh this is second Peter's three and fifteen it says an account that the long suffering of Yahweh is salvation even as our beloved brother Paul also according to the wisdom given unto him hath written unto you so remember Paul's apostle to the Gentiles but he said he wrote unto you so who is Peter talking he's talking to the Jews he's talking to Israel so Paul is talking to Israel read it on it says as also in all his epistles speaking in them of things in which are some things hard to be understood which they that are unlearned and unstable rest as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction and we're reading Romans which written by Paul and there's people that rest with him for uh, their own destruction if because Christianity teaches you to open up the book and go towards the middle of the book towards the end and start reading you'll, you'll, no book in history you will understand by opening up in the middle of it and reading and trying to figure out what try try watching a movie and, and looking in the middle of it start from the middle and see what you ain't gonna figure out you know and Christianity teaches you that you know to start you know with, with Paul's letters you know uh, Corinthians uh, Acts and uh, Corinthians Acts uh, Galatians stuff like that 
You gotta eat that whole roll. If you eat that whole roll, you won't rest. Uh, this is the book of uh, 1 Corinthians 12 and 2. It says, Ye know that ye were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols, even as ye were led. You want to speak on that? Yeah, he says, Remember, he says, ye were Gentiles. Now, uh, read, read that uh, the part where it says, Carry it away to, those dumb, to these dumb idols. Uh, ye know that ye were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols, even as ye were led. Past tense. Uh, what scripture says, Ephraim clingeth unto idols, let him alone. And, e and, and Ephraim represents what? The northern kingdom, which represents uh, the northern tribes. They cling unto these dumb, stupid idols. You know, uh, Jeroboam was making all types of uh, idols. You had the uh, uh, up in Dan. I forgot uh, what city it was, but they, it was a lot of idolatry going up. That was like a, 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 like an idolatry hub capital. Uh, going up, up up in there you know they was uh making their own type of uh they they was just going way the hell off you know with idols he, he from you know love these idols they, he, he, even to this day he from love a caesar bogier these are caesar bogier candles all that kind and how could you be a gentile and not be a gentile no more kind. that's just like saying you were chinese or you you were african you know, or you were white, you know, there's no way that you could, you know, put off your ethnicity and become something else. You know, now you got some people might go to the scripture in the book of Ezra and say that they all became Jews. That doesn't mean that they, you know, uh, uh, became a whole separate, totally different nation than what they were. That just means that they started to practice the, the, the belief of the Jews. Yeah. You know, so there's a lot of scriptures that uh, um, Christians get misconstrued And this is one of them Ye were Gentiles This scripture means that That basically you were pagans You were worshipping all of these Heathenistic religions And you know uh, uh, Accepted their culture And their way of life And their practices And eating you know swine And you know eating all of this abomination And you know burning incense To, to these deities And worshipping devils But however through Yahweh Shai You were called out of that Now I have um, one more scripture, and that's the book of uh, Ephesians, uh, the second chapter in verse 11. It says, Wherefore remember that ye being in times past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called circumcision in the flesh made by hands. You know, so you were... In times past in that Gentile state of mind, you know, that's what this scripture is explaining. You know, you were in the Gentile state of mind. But through Yahweh Shai, they were liberated from, you know, that particular way of life, you know, in, in that particular conversation. You know, and they were brought back into the truth. And this is what it's speaking about, you know, in the New Testament, you know, amongst other things. On that note, I want to give all praise and glory unto Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Rakakwadash. Double honors to the elders of GMS, who well. Peace, light, taste, like, Akim, on four corners, person, truth, sincerity. Peace be unto you. Shalom. Shalom.